Well, hi and welcome. Well, Christmas is coming soon and hopefully the lockdown restrictions will, will have eased a little bit and we can all then be with our family and friends and have a nice end to the year from hell. And I thought just for a bit of fun, I'd show you how to create a snow brush and add snow to one of your winter images. Okay, well, let's dig in. Okay, step one. What we need to do is create a base for our brush. And we're going to do that with a new document. So I'm going to open up the new document dialog with the keyboard shortcut. I'm a, I'm a keyboard shortcut junkie. Of control and N or command and N if you're on a Mac. And then I'm going to look at a, down this, this right hand side here. I just want a 500 pixels. So I'm going to set this for pixels. So I want a width and a height of 500. Leave resolution at 72 and do nothing with anything else. RGB colour, white I want as a background, colour profile, square pixels, just leave as they are. And then I'm going to click create. And that's going to create me a square, basically a square white piece of paper. Now, step two, we want to create a basic brush. Now, in our canvas here, we're going to put some dots on to, as the basis for this brush. So what I need to do is to make sure that, that black is my foreground colour because that's the colour that I will be saving my brush as. Now at the moment it's white, my foreground colour, so I'm just going to press the D key and that resets it to black and white. And then I'm going to select my brush tool or you can just press on and click on the B key. And then the hardness, I want to be 100%. So I'm going to go into the little brush doohickey here, that little thing, and we've got our brush. I don't want the, the other snow brush. I just want a, a hard round at 100%, which is 100% hard. And then I'm just going to create some dots. So I'll click there. With the square bracket keys, I'll make me a bit bigger, my brush a little bit bigger, and I'll put a slightly bigger one there. I'll make it even bigger and put one in this corner. Oh, let's have a, an even bigger one. These are going to be just little little snowdrops. And I'll make that smaller again. And I'll put something there and then one up in that corner. A bit smaller. And a couple up there, even smaller. So I've got some little snowdrops. And I might put one down there, like that. Now I've got all my, my snow drops on here. What I want to do is save it out as a brush. So I'm going to go to the edit menu and I'm going to go down to define brush preset. And then I'm going to give it a name and I'll just call it snow. I'll call it me snow brush. There we go. I'm going to click OK. And now you'll see it automatically loads it on to me mouse. So if I move around, I can click and I'll be, I'll be creating these dots. So I'm not going to click on anything that I don't want to click on at the moment. So I'm just going to go back and we'll click on the move tool. Now step three, I want to add some dynamics to this brush. Because if, if I show you the brush now, I'll just create another layer on here. Go to my brush tool, you'll see that I've got the brush again. But at the moment I'm going to be painting with black, so I don't want black snow. So I need to reverse these colours. So I'm going to just press the X key and that'll toggle my foreground and my background colour. And now you can see if I click, it'll make some dots. It's alright, and if I click and drag, not looking a lot like snow. And that's because this is a very static brush. What I need to do, I'll just undo them. What we need to do is add some dynamics to the brush. And this is what we're going to do next. So what we're going to do, we're going to go up to the window menu and we're going to go for brush settings. And this is where the magic happens with a brush. So these are all the settings that we can change. It's automatically got the brush selected that I've been that I've, we've made a few minutes ago. Uh, and now I can start playing around with it. And you can see this is the preview pane here that shows you what the brush looks like. So I'll keep an eye on that as we as we go through. So the first thing I'm going to do is, is double click to make sure I'm, I'm in brush tip shape. And I'm going to change the spacing. 
and I'm going to change that and you, and you can see what, what I'm talking about here that these line this line here looks as though it's continuous but actually it isn't it's a load of dots right next to each other so it looks like a line just like you can see here with these smaller dots so if I increase the spacing it'll increase the spacing between them dots and I just want it somewhere around yeah around 15% something like that I think is is good enough to go next I want to click on shape dynamics and I'm going to double click to make sure that it opens up the right panel and on here I'm going to get my size jitter and I'm going to max it out right over to 100 and you can see what it's doing now jitter means random so basically it's randomizing the size so you can see now that I've, I've got some small dots big dots and even though I had some small dots it's making lots of smaller and bigger dots as well so I've got a quite a randomized pattern which is more or less what I want I'm going to put the angle of the the angle jitter right I'm maximizing that as well and you can see there it, it's rotating and moving the angle so every time I click it'll give me a different angle and you can see how it's looking now on the preview pane underneath and then I'll have a bit of roundness jitter and what that's doing is you'll see it's making if I, if I pull that right across it's making them not round so we're going really oval but I don't want it to change so I'm putting some jitter in because I want it to randomize um, and then I'll have a minimum roundness I don't want them to be too oval so if we set a minimum roundness it'll give me slightly oval but not too much next I'm going to go into scattering and um, with scattering we've we, we're basically we, we're moving the things all the all the way around so with the scattering I'm going to click both axes because I want it to scatter this way vertically and horizontally and now I can move the scatter and you can see what it's doing it's zooming them out and I want to be around I think about 800% something like that to give me a good scatter and lastly I want transfer now transfer what this does this tells um, the this makes the brush so you can see what's happening here that there's some of the ones are, are quite white and other ones are getting more opaque and this is what transfer does and it'll give the effect a, a much better effect as snow because some of them will look as though they're further away um, I've got the opacity jitter up at 100% so you can see that some of them are really opaque and some of them are not um, flow jitter well we'll leave that where it is but about 40-50% something like that and I think we're ready to go and what I need to do now is save this dynamic brush out so I'm going to click on this little doohickey here and I'm going to call it snow brush uh, I'm going to make sure that there's a tick in each of these I do want to capture the the brush size in the preset and I do want to include the tool settings and we can include the color as well and then I'm going to click OK OK and that's it that's me brush made okay now we're going to add the snow to our image but I want to do it on different layers now I've already got an empty layer here um, so I'll use that and I'm going to call that distant snow okay so this is the far off stuff so I'm going to get my brush get my brush tool with my lovely snow brush on it and I'm going to make it really teeny tiny small let's just give it a go see what happens click oh no that's too big okay edit and undo no we want to be I'm using the square brackets to make it really small 60 50 I don't know something like 35 pixels and then I'll just click and drag hmm probably still a bit big that just undo them and I'll take it down to oh, let's say 30 25 something like that and then oh that's a bit better and then basically I'm just clicking and dragging to create this really random snow effect I'm not putting any of it down here in the foreground and I'm trying to avoid getting it over the main subject 
which is this deer. So I'm just clicking and dragging. And at the moment, yeah, it doesn't look too realistic, but this is a bit of a snowstorm, so we've got plenty. But I'm trying to get this to be snow that's in the background. And so the background is blurry. So really this snow should be blurry as well. So I'm going to give it a Gaussian blur. So I'm going to go to filter and blur and Gaussian blur. And I'll just play with the radius until I think it looks about right. So I think somewhere about there it fits nicely with that background. So it's giving it a bit of depth. It's moving it away from, uh, from the subject here. And then I'll click OK. So now I'm going to create another empty layer. And I'm going to call this and I'm going to call this middle snow. And on this layer, I'm going to make it the brush a little bit bigger. So square brackets, we'll take it up to maybe what we'll try 90. And I'll click and drag. That's not bad. OK, so now I've got quite a random brush going on. And we'll bring a bit of this down into a little bit of the foreground. There we go. And we'll get a little bit over the deer as well. And that's a bit too much, so I'll just edit and undo that one. And you can see you never know where it's going to put the, the actual blobs of snow. I think that looks OK. And now on this one, uh, I'm going to give it a little bit of motion blur. So I'm going to go up to filter and down to blur and down to motion blur. Uh, I'm going at this at the angle of, of about 60 degrees and then I'll just play with the distance until I get it looking uh, well, what I think is right. Well, I, I don't want it to be a blizzard. Um, so I'm going down, start at 10, take it up slowly. And I think somewhere like that's not bad. Um, but you can still see there's some of the edges on these these circular blobs that have now been motion blurred. But I'll click OK. And then what I'll do is I'll just add a little bit of Gaussian blur on top of that. So I'll go to Filter and Blur and Gaussian Blur just to soften the edges a little bit more. And that's not looking bad, that for... If I go too far down, they'll get the edges back again. So I need to be about four or five pixels, I think, to get that looking right. So yeah, I'll leave it at that. And then I'll make another layer. And I'll call this Close Snow. Well, get my fingers working. Close Snow. So I'll make this even bigger so get it somewhere like that let's see what that does oh that's not bad actually but it's it's not really coming on very well so i'm gonna to have to make it a little bit smaller ah that's better yep so i'm getting some bigger flakes of snow and they're in the foreground so there we've got those Yep, I think, I think that's fine. I think that'll work fine. And then I'm going to do exactly the same. So I'm going to go to Filter and Blur and do a little bit of Motion Blur. Uh, play out again with the distance. Something... I think that looks quite good. Okay, and again, I'm going to follow this up with a little bit of Gaussian Blur. Just to soften the edges off a little bit and again five five pixels seems to do it it just looks like that's really close to the viewer yeah i like that okay and i'll click ok now you can continue with this and do as many layers as you like the good thing is that if you've got any snow that's that's causing a concern like here you say well i don't want it right over in this particular place then you can just go to your eraser tool and you can take it out. That's pretty cool. Um, or you can go, let's say the middle snow, you could 
well, you could let's duplicate it. We could duplicate the layer uh, if we wanted to do that. And then we'll get the move tool. Oh no, we won't. We'll transform it. That'll be better. Control and T for transform. And we can move it around. So we can put it into a totally new position if that's what we need to do. If we want it a little bit snowier. And there we go. That's that done. Or we could rotate it a little bit if we said, oh, well, I'll have some of this snow coming at a slightly uh, more oblique angle. I'll do something like that. And that's it. And then let's just make that into a group. So I'll select all my snows and do a con control or command G to put it into a group. And we'll call that snow. And then we can look at the before and after. So that's before and that's after. And we've got all the snow in here. If we think, well, that foreground snow looks a little bit um, too close, then what we can do is we can reduce the opacity a little bit. So we've got full control over making this as we want it. Each layer can be moved, rotated, repositioned to suit you. Now, just a note. Um, the, the numbers used in the brush sizes and blurs are, are appropriate for my image. And this image size is 1920 by 1280 pixels. If you use images larger or smaller, then you'll have to experiment with different numbers to get the same effect. Now, if you want to, I'll leave a link. This image is available to download from pixabay.com if you want to practice along with the video. And I'll leave the, the link under the video. Well, that's it for creating a very festive snow brush. I do hope you found it useful. If you did, please give me a thumbs up or leave me a message, leave me a comment under the video. That will be most useful. And please click that subscribe button. It'd be really helpful to me if you could. It helps me to reach more people. So all that being said, we'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.